appreciate the service thus far. And uh, thought we might be moving a little slower than we do sometimes. Yeah. Uh, a lot of us maybe not feeling the best, but uh, God's still good. Yes, He is. I do cover your prayer tonight. Maybe not feeling the best myself. Mary Church, I'm not but nauseous, but uh, uh, Lord can help us. Amen. Uh, we'll turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter 33. And uh, I've got a thought on my, on my mind tonight. And, uh, see what the Lord would have for us. Exodus chapter 33. We'll start reading in verse 21. <laughs> The Bible says, And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass, come to pass while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Thank you for standing for the reading. Uh, the thought that I got on my mind tonight, verse 21, the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me. And uh, I thought, uh, there is a place that we can be tonight with the Lord. Yes. Uh, there is a place by Him. Mm -hmm. A place that, if you would, that is ordered by Him. Right. Uh, that we can be. And, uh, and I thought it's important for us to make sure that we're in that place. Yes. Right. I thought uh, this week I've been uh, uh, working there at the house some in the evenings and, and uh, remodeling the bathroom. And... Uh, I, I, we talked to Brother Bill and Brother Sparks for church. There's there's nothing that I dislike no more than plumbing, and uh, I thought there's I, I, I'm, you know there's uh, I, I can try about to do about anything, and uh, I may not be the best at it, but I can pretty much get it accomplished. But I, but I, I just dread plumbing, and uh, but I thought uh, this week uh, I'd come in and and Kyle, my grandson, he would uh, get off the bus there at the house, and he wanted to stay and help me every evening. Uh, stay a little longer, and, and uh, believe it or not, he's just seven. But sometimes, Brother Harold, he's pretty good help. Amen. I mean, he don't yeah. care to jump right in there and help you. Yeah. And uh, but uh, I, I guess it was Friday, and and uh, we was there working, and I was under the under the house and trying to run some plumbing, and and I had him helping me, and and uh, and all I wanted him to do was stand there and hold the light. Uh -huh. And uh, I mean, you're under the dark cross space, you need somebody to hold the light, Brother Bill. And, and uh, but but the problem was he felt that that job was insignificant. Yeah. <laughs> that it just wasn't important enough. And uh -huh. and uh, he kept doing this and doing that. And he wanted to help do. It. And uh, and I said, Colin, honey, just hold the light. And and uh, and, and uh, uh, but because it was important that I had that light. Uh -huh. And uh, finally, I found one of the magnet and. We live in a, in a double wide, so it's got a steel frame there, and I stuck that magnet up there and, uh, to help hold the light because he felt that his job was insignificant. Oh, yeah. And and I began to think about that, and I thought, how many times has the Lord, Sister Marsha, give us something to do, Come on. and we felt like it was just insignificant? Yeah. Come on. But see, yeah. the thing was, I, it was necessary that I needed him there. Yeah. And, and the Lord said, there is a place by me. You know, we know the, uh, the story of Moses and, and the great things that God done with him and, and how that he led the, uh, the, the children of Israel out. And, and, and we know that the, the while he was up on the mountain with God and, and the things that went on down there with Aaron and, and the others, how they uh, went into idolatry. And, and, but the thing was, was, was God had placed Moses in that position and, and he, he desired to draw closer and closer to God. And, and finally the Lord said, Moses, there's a place mm -hmm. up on the rock on. by me. Yeah, yeah. And, and I thought, I begin to think about that. And I thought, I want to be in that place by God. Yeah, yeah. I thought, I want to be in that place where he has put me. I thought, uh, uh, you know, as a church, 
We are, are, are standing in a place that no other church has ever been has ever stood before. Come on. And, I, and, I, and, I, and when I'm talking about church, I'm talking about the church, the, the real, the true church of God uh -huh. in general. Yeah. The ones that are, that are really just striving to do the will of God. Uh -huh. Because we are standing uh, at the end of, uh, of the dispensation and on the threshold of the coming of the Lord. That's right. I mean, we are standing, I mean, all my life, I'm, <coughs> I'll soon be 49 year old. And all my life I've heard our brother Ronnie, of the coming of the Lord. Lord. And, and I thought uh, all my life I have looked for the coming of the Lord. Right. And I thought we are closer now than we have ever been That's to right. the coming of the Lord. I remember uh, Brother Sparks relates to Brother Isaacs a lot. And, and I remember he'd come to church and a lot of times I'd, I'd sit and I'd talk to him some before the church. And You know, Brother Isaacs, he was up in his 90s when he passed away. But you, but you know, he really, he really had a desire to be here when the Lord came back to call the church away. Mm -hmm. right. And there were many times he told me, he said, I think I'll be here when the Lord comes. And, uh, you know, and, and but, but time went on, he didn't, and, and he's gone. But, you know, I feel like that there's a lot of us that's going to be here when the Lord comes back to take right. church. And I thought that we're standing on the on the threshold of that time. And, and I thought that God has chosen us and, and, and all of us to play this critical role uh, in this final uh, time and in this last day revival. That's it. That's right. I'm on, uh, I read and, and, uh, and I'm not much of a reader and, and uh, don't really enjoy reading a lot, but I have read some of, of the Azusa Street Revival. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've got the book there at the house somewhere. We haven't got rid of it. And, and, uh, and I read parts of it. Didn't read the whole book. Like I said, don't like to read, but I, but I read some of it. And, and I have heard a lot about that Azusa Street Revival and, and the things that took place there. And I thought that is was the opening and, and the, the, uh, the, uh, the revival that brought Pentecostalism and, 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 and wholeness back, which wholeness was already alive. Uh, people back then, everybody lived wholeness. Uh, but, uh, but, the, but the tongues and the, and the Holy Ghost coming and setting up on them. And, and I thought that was the revival at the turn of the, of the last century. I thought we're already into another century. But in the turn of the 1900s, whenever that revival took place. And I thought everybody no doubt thought, you know, this is that last day revival. But it was uh, the opening of that last day revival. I thought we, we have a, uh, we, we, uh, another whole hundred years that went by. And I thought over, over in, uh, rolled over in, in 2020. And I thought we still were looking forward to the Lord coming back. And I thought we are in that last day. Right. And I thought we go back and then we can read of, uh, of those old older saints, uh, those old Methodists and those old Nazarenes and, and how that the power of God was moving on and the great revivals they had. Right. But then we see where that church is today. Right. I read in the paper, I believe it was last week, well not the paper, but on my phone, uh, on the news, and, uh, uh, and I read, I believe it was uh, the United Methodist Church. It's fixing to have a, a, a you know a, a big separation in their denomination and dividing up over over a, uh, ordaining homosexuals into their, their ministry. And I thought, and we look back and we we can read in when the United Methodist Church how the fire of God was moving upon them and, and some of the people, brother uh, Tom, that that uh, that that our ancestors. Close related to us were, were going to those churches and the power of God began to fall and they began to be filled with the Holy Ghost right. because they felt that place beside God. Right. And I thought there is a place for right. us beside God. Yeah. Right. There is a place that we can be where that God can use us. Right. And I thought it's necessary. I thought, you know, uh, in, in being in management and <coughs> Brother Jim and Brother Harold uh, he, you know, he, he supervises some, and uh, I think that's what he does now. He, he's over a whole bunch of crews, and uh, make sure they're all busy. And and I thought there's nothing no more aggravating than uh, than trying to uh, to get a job done, and, and somebody you know they're willing to work, but they're not willing to do the job you need them to do, <laughs> and uh, because they they feel like that there's other jobs that they would rather do. Uh -huh. And I thought you know, and and I, I'm guilty of that. I'm very guilty of, of, of when the Lord lays something on my heart, Lord, but I would rather do this. On, I thought, yeah. but if we're going to get to that place where that we can be beside God, we've got to do the job 
Yeah. And God has laid it us. Yes, we We've got to be at that place. Yes. You know, there's a place where God wants us. And uh, in Acts uh, 2 and 17, uh, God said he would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Yes. Because he has a place for all of us yes. to work. Uh, 1 Peter 5 and 8 says to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. You know, and, and, and the reason that is because the enemy would like to keep us from getting to that place. Oh, yeah. He's going to do whatever he can to distract us, yeah. to draw our attention away from where we need to be. Oh, now, you know what? Now, it's easy to allow things to distract us. Mm -hmm. now, have you ever been talking to someone? I thought, I'm very guilty of it. And a lot of times, Sister Kathy, uh, we'll, we'll be talking about something that she'll be talking. And uh, then, uh, uh, you know, and, and I'll look at her and I'll say, yes. And she'll say, you did not hear nothing that I just said. <laughs> and, and, I, and, I, and I have to look at her and say, no, I didn't. I didn't hear nothing you said. because Why? Because I, I allowed something to distract me. I have something to draw me away. And I thought a lot of times we're the very same way with God. I thought we, we allow something to draw us away from the things that we're needing to be paying attention to. I thought I don't know about you, Brother Ronnie, but when I'm at the house, the most important person I've got to pay attention to is my wife. I mean, you know, yeah, just, that's the way it is. But but I thought a lot sometimes we allow ourselves to be drawn away. So when we're at the house of God, or we're out on the work of God, the field for God, the thing we need to be paying attention to is God. That's, right. That's the most important thing that we can play, uh, pay attention to. I thought, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of things uh, that in life that simply God can use us uh, to to give us that place. Yes. You know, uh, it, it was my role, and uh, uh, most of us men, uh, we we we. You know, we got married, we, we start a family, we become a dad. We become a father. And I thought when we when we done that, then we took on responsibilities that we never had before. Right. Yeah. And I thought uh, uh you know responsibilities that, that we you know most of us, I mean, I'm just barely nineteen year old when David was born. And uh, I mean I'm just kidding myself, so uh but I was not ready for a lot of responsibility that I thought I was. Uh, time Sister Lord come around, that's five years later, and I've done 24 year old, but I'm still just a kid. I still wasn't ready for another, a lot of the responsibilities yeah. that I thought I was. Yeah. And I thought, that, you know, but, but God has placed us there. You know, and, and, and I thought he, he gave us directions in His Word. I thought in the book of Ephesians, uh, we can read that uh, uh, that He said, Father, provoke not our children to wrath, yeah. but bring them up in the nature and the admonition of God. And I thought I looked that word admonition up, <coughs> and it simply means to uh, to have the respect for the authority of God. Uh -huh. And I thought uh, when you have the respect for the authority of God, then there's that chain of command That's right. that we're to have respect for. That's right. Now, you know, we live in a time when people don't, and young people especially, they don't have no respect for no one. Right. I mean, you go into the stores and, and uh, or the restaurants or wherever, and you, and you can hear them. Uh, talking and, and uh, uh, talking to the parents and, and a lot of them being raised by the grandparents now on children and, and have no respect. And I thought if they don't have no respect, and then how do we think they're going to have respect for God? Right. And, and I thought, uh, uh, but one of the simplest ways uh, to begin to teach uh, our young people, and I thought one thing that I can remember more than anything, uh, you know, and, and one way to teach and how to have respect was simply being thankful for the things we have. And, uh, and on, I thought I never remember going to a meal and sitting down at the table and eating without offering things first. Right. And uh, and I thought uh, you know we go to a restaurant, we sit down and we eat, and uh, I don't care if we go to the Mexican restaurant and they bring us a chip before we eat those chips, we offer things over that. Yeah. And uh, and I thought uh, uh, you know and it's just the way that that we done just to simply offer God uh, the things. And I thought uh, when I as as a child I could look back and I and I see those things and I realized. That we were that we uh, uh, were were trying to draw a place beside God. Right. Yeah. You know, I remember when I was talking about praying over your food when I was a kid, and uh, uh, you know, like I said, we always prayed over the food at home. And uh, there was sometimes we'd go to 
uh, you know, maybe I'd go home with a friend or something. They sit down, they just tear in, not eat. And I'm like, you know, ain't you gonna pray first? And uh, but uh, but I remember, you know, being a kid, and we go to mom halls and eat, and and uh, uh, you know, and there was times that Papa would sit down to pray, and uh, the Spirit of God began to move on him, Brother Harold, while he's praying. And those tears would start running down his face. Yes. And, uh, and, you know, and, he, and, he, and he prayed. And, and sometimes he prayed a long time. Yeah. And, uh, and I thought, you know, and, and all of us, the grandkids and the children and, and whoever else might decide to show up on Sunday uh, for dinner. I mean, a lot of times the house is packed. And I thought, but, but he let them know that he was going to take time to pray. Right. And I thought it was there during that time that he found a place beside the Lord. Woo. I know, you know, so many times we, we're looking and we're expecting something extravagant to take place. So we say we'd be beside the Lord. But it's in those simple things that God wants to draw us close to Him. Like I said with Kyle, you know, he thought, you know, and then we, we, we put in a new bathtub. And, and we got home. I, had, I told her, I said, when we get home, let's call uh, David to get him come up and help me pack this thing in the bedroom, and into the bathroom. And, and uh, she said, to, uh, you know, okay. And, and Colin said, I'll help you. And I said, no, honey, it's too heavy. And Sister Kathy said, no, I tried to pack it. It was too heavy for me. And he said, you know, he just determined he was going to pack that thing because he wanted to do something that, that he felt like was, was really getting something accomplished when it was those simple things that I needed him for. And all the time, we were doing the same thing with God. And I know one thing that will keep us from getting to that place where we need to be, God, be with God a lot of times we just allow too much stuff in life. We just get too much stuff. You know, we, uh, uh, after Sister Kathy's grandmothers had passed away, uh, she, uh, one of her grandmothers uh, had a lot of dishes and a lot of things like that. And uh, she had a curio cabinet. She had all that stuff in it. She had, uh, we had a piano. We had all kinds of whatnots and things. And uh, she's not real sentimental. And she got tired of dusting all that stuff. And she, the kids got, some of the kids, and David took a lot of it. And, and uh, you know, we just we just got rid of a lot of things. Just cleared up a lot of clutter, if you would. And, uh, but, uh, we, you know, we went in, and, and you'd think just tearing out a simple bathroom wouldn't make a lot of things. But, you know, it was off of our bedroom. And, and, and all last week I'd come in, and, and uh, you know, we had, uh, we got double vanities in the bathroom. We had two vanities sitting in our bedroom. I had a bathtub sitting in her bedroom. I had tools sitting in my bedroom and, and just a lot of clutter. You know, Brother Ronnie, I'd come in and, and, I, and I, you know, I was home, but I just wasn't comfortable right. because I'm not used to all that clutter. Come on. Right. And, and I thought a lot of times we, uh, you know, and, and I'd come in and, and we'd go to work and, and I thought uh, I think it was Thursday when I came in and I was trying to lay some tile down and trying to cut the tile. I couldn't keep up with my pencil because I had all this stuff scattered around and, and my pencil got knocked. I don't and finally I found it and got rolled underneath another piece of tile. And, 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 but, I, but, I, but I found myself getting aggravated and agitated because I, I couldn't keep my stuff together because of all this clutter. Right. And I thought I couldn't get nothing accomplished because of all the clutter. Come on. And finally I got up and I told her, I said, I've got to clear some of this stuff out of the way so I can get this, get this accomplished. And we had to move some stuff around. And I thought sometimes it's what we've got to do with God in order to get to where He needs us to be. I thought we've got to get rid of some stuff. Clear out some clutter. I thought after we got everything put together yesterday, and, uh, uh, you know, and it's, it wasn't as rainy and stuff as they thought it was going to be. And, and, uh, and, I, and I'd like to have been outside doing some things, but I, but I was tired of the clutter. And I said, let's get this house cleaned up. And, and we started in one room and just started working our way through the house and getting the dust out and getting the clutter out and getting all the tools picked up, getting everything moved out of the way because I wanted that comfort back yes, that I was yes. used to. Yes. Get rid of the clutter. And I thought we've yes. got to get rid of the things in our life that's Come keeping on. us from getting where that's we need right. to be. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Oh, we need to be comfortable working yeah. in the field for God. Come on. Yeah. And I thought, uh, we've got to be willing to do. You know, and I thought, uh, you know, uh, and I said that about, you know, uh, the dads, but I thought even, even the sisters, there, there's, a, there's a place in the home where they can draw, and, and there's a place beside God right. for them to work. And I, and I realize some sisters work outside the house, and, <laughs> and, and, and you know, that, that's necessary. And I thought, but, but even then, as a mother, they're still there. there there's, that, there's that guidance that God instilled in right. them. Uh, that, that to, to teach and, and to draw those children 
close to God. And that it's ordained by God. Yeah. Like I said, <coughs> uh, uh, you go back to the book of Joel. Whenever, uh, it, whenever he began to talk about the, the things uh, of the last days, and he said he'd pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And then he began to talk about the sons and daughters of prophesying. The old men would dream dreams and, and the young men would see visions. And, yeah. and then, then he'd even pour his spirit out upon the handmaidens. I mean, he gave a list of everybody to make sure that everybody understood that there is a work for everybody oh, yeah. to do to draw close yeah. to God. Yeah. And I thought, uh, but it's about us being in that place where God wants us to be. Mm. That place where God Desires us to be. You know, uh, uh, Moses got in that place where God told him to be. And he just wasn't in a place of on the sand. Right. Or he didn't tell him to go down into the, the raging water and, and there's a place for me, for you. Or he didn't tell him to go down into the mire. But he said there's a place on the rock. On the rock. Right. On the rock. Uh -huh. A place that's sturdy. A yeah. place that's steadfast. Yeah. A place that's unmovable. And I thought when we get to that place that's beside God, yes, we can Lord. get things, we, we can be where God can use us. Yeah. I thought, uh, you know, Moses couldn't look upon the face of God, but he got to be in he got in that place. He got to look out and see the hinder parts of the Lord yes. as he began to walk away. Oh, and I thought, I don't know about you, but I want to feel the presence of God. Oh, and I thought, it's in that place yeah. Yeah. that we can feel yes, his spirit. Yeah. He said, there is a place beside me. Mm -hmm. And I thought, <clears throat> are we in that place that God wants us to be tonight? I thought, are we in that place where God can use us? I thought, I want to be, I want to be willing to be used by God. I thought, I don't, want to, I don't want to look at the things God gives me to do and think they're insignificant. Think they're not of no importance. Because anything God has for us to do is important. I remember several years ago, a long time ago, and uh, just a just a kid. And uh, unfortunately, you know, when we get into our teenage years, maybe we allow things to draw us away from God. But I'm talking just 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 a kid in church one night, and. Uh, and, and I never felt nothing like that before. I don't know, maybe 11, 12 year old. And uh, and I just felt like going praying for somebody. I didn't know how to really pray for nobody, but I was just, just a kid. But I just walked over and laid my hands on them. And the Spirit of the Lord came by and blessed me so good. Yeah. It's just a child. Yeah. And I remember after church, uh, an older fella came up to me. And he said, I hope you really enjoyed that blessing tonight. He said, because it was supposed to be mine. Come on. But I didn't feel like that the Lord really wanted me to do that. Right. You know, and it's just a child. And I never forgot that. Right. And I thought, maybe the Lord worked all that around just to let me understand. It's in those simple tasks yeah. that the Lord lays on our hands. Uh -huh. He's going to draw us close right. to him. Yeah. And I thought, whatever it is the Lord's drawing you to do tonight, draw close to him. Yes. Because right. it's important that we be in the place right. that God wants us to be yeah. so that he can use us for the job that he needs. Yes. And I thought it's important that we be where God wants us to be. They come against a song tonight. <clears throat> I hope I've helped you. But I thought let's be in that place yes. that God has specifically for us. As they get us a song tonight. Let's come this song and pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, help. I'm trying to